Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalomobile, and welcome to the first part of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. Rubik's Cubes are 3D combination puzzles. Invented in 1974 by Erno Rubik, over 350 million cubes have been sold worldwide. It is widely considered to be the world's best-selling toy. We're going to create our own in Unity. I treated this project like a game jam, so please forgive me as I did not set out to write the cleanest or most refactored code. I just wanted to get a good implementation that includes automatic solving that we can do together and hopefully learn something along the way. Any links to external assets are included. All the code is available as a Unity package and the result, which you can see in the background right now, can be played online in a browser. I've split this series into seven parts and they are all available right now. In this first part, we're going to build the cube and set up our scene. In part two, we'll add the ability to rotate the cube so our players can have a look around it. In part three, we'll add a cube map and cast our first ray cast at the cube to read a face. In part four, we'll graduate to reading the entire state of the cube with many ray casts. In part five, we will add player interactivity with the ability to rotate any side of the cube with the mouse. In part six, we'll add automated movement and give the players the option to shuffle the cube into a random state. Finally, in part 7, we will implement an existing solution, the Cochemba two-phase method, to quickly solve the cube at a press of a button. We're talking sub-second solves in under 23 moves. Let's get started. We're starting this from scratch, so the first thing we need to do is create a brand new Unity project. I'm calling mine R-Cube. You can call yours whatever you want. The cube is going to be 3D, so be sure to make sure that 3D is selected. We're building the main assets for this game ourselves, so once the editor has loaded, we can right click in the hierarchy, select 3D object, then cube, to create a basic cube in our scene. I'm going to rearrange the windows a bit, so we can see what the game will look like from the player's perspective too. From this angle, we'll be looking straight ahead at the face of this cube. We could rotate it to get a better view, but I'd rather leave the cube where it is and move the camera instead. That way, we line up the cube nicely with the grid in the scene view. We can move the camera's position by negative 12 world units in the X direction, then rotate back towards the cube by 45 degrees on the Y axis, so that the two sides become visible. We can zoom in on the cube by changing the camera's field of view. Let's make that 30 instead. To get a view of the top of the cube, we can move the camera vertically up by 8 units in the Y direction, then rotate around the X axis by 30 degrees. The base color of the cube should be black. By right clicking in the project tab, we can create a new material, name it black, and set the color using the color picker to be black. Dragging the new material from the project tab onto the cube in the hierarchy coats our cube with the new material. Now that we have a basic piece, we can start adding the sides. In real life, each piece of the cube only has the outer sides, but we're going to give this piece all of them and turn off the ones we don't need later. To make the first side, the cube can be duplicated and another new material created. I'm making this one orange and renaming the game object front as it will be the front face of the cube. Next, we can move it into a rough position using the game view as a helpful reference of where things are in the scene. Change the scale of the X transform to 0.1 units and adjust the position to be closer to the cube. We don't want the face to cover the entire side, so we can reduce the scale of Y and Z to 0.9 units. Now that it's looking about right, we can round the transform positions to the nearest 0.5 units to make it line up more precisely. The back face is created by duplicating the front face and moving it to the other side of the cube. The remaining faces are created in the same way, resized and placed into their positions. I've named them front, back, left, right, up and bottom. The bottom face should really be called down, but I'll fix that mistake later. Now that everything is in the right place, we can color the sides by creating new materials, setting the colors with the color picker tool and dragging them on to their respective sides. I'm going to have yellow on the upper face, blue on the right, green on the left, red on the back, white on the underside and leave the front orange. You're welcome to pick any color combination you like. The color of the faces won't matter when calculating how to solve the cube, only the side of the piece the color is on. Once all the colors have been applied, we can make the faces children of the cube in the hierarchy. This cube represents a single piece of the puzzle, so I've renamed it Piece. We can also tidy our materials into their own materials folder and create a new folder to house our prefabs. We can make our piece a prefab by dragging it from the hierarchy into the project window. I'm putting both the piece prefab and the materials folder in the prefab folder. Now that we have pieces, we can start building our cube. The cube is constructed by duplicating the pieces in the hierarchy and moving them into position to create a 3x3 grid of pieces. We can then stack three of these on top of each other to make the cube. 
The middle piece of the central layer can be deleted as we're not going to use it, but it is important to make sure that the center of the cube is at the origin point, where the x, y, and z position are all zero. The transform tab in the inspector can be used to make sure that everything lines up exactly. These pieces will be our cube, so we can create an empty game object named cube to house them. Remember to reset the transform of the new game object so that it is at the origin too. The pieces can now be made children of the cube game object. I'm also making a new empty game object cube holder and resetting the transform of that too. The cube is going to be a child of this game object so that any transformations or rotations can be done in local instead of world space. The background is looking really dull, so let's fix that next. Right clicking the main camera, we can attach a new 3D object, a quad, and zoom out a bit so we can see it better. This quad needs to be large enough to cover the background, so the scale is set to 40 units X and 20 units Y. As it is a child of the camera, the angle is already correct, and we can just move it away by 25 units in the Z direction. The cube should not be able to cast a shadow on the quad, so we can select the quad in the hierarchy and turn off receive shadows in the inspector. To get a nice background, I'm heading over to Pixabay for a royalty-free picture of a blue sky. You can use whatever picture you like, this one seems perfect. Once downloaded, we can drag the file into our project, then drag the image onto the quad. Hit play in the editor, and that's looking a lot better. It's time to add some movement. That's it for part one. In the next episode, we'll add the ability to rotate the cube so our players can have a look around it. If you're enjoying this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.